game four of the finals. Jeslin versus Paul, and again it's Soviets versus Over Commando West. Again, I think that this is the matchup in which Jeslin is the strongest. Well, I also think this is the matchup in which Paul is the strongest. I don't know. I don't know what I think about this exactly. It just seems like Soviets seem very strong against OKW on this map. They both vetoed all of the other maps though, so if they were banking on their allied play, then that means Paul is at a very serious disadvantage this game, and he's going to need to execute flawlessly, and it looks like he's changing his game plan a little bit, sending his SWS straight down the road now with Stern Pioneer support. We may see a very aggressive push for Jeslin's cutoff here. We also have Folks Grenadiers moving to take the north while Jeslin takes everything in the south, so pretty standard opening, although I'm wondering if this aggressive push here with the Stern Pioneers is going to force Jeslin's hand a little bit. But he's, uh, okay, never mind. Not being too aggressive, throwing up defenses on the cover position there with the Sturms while the half track simply scouts. Disengaging is pretty quiet opening. <laughs> this map always has such a tense opening because it's the way it's laid out just encourages the east player to go south and the west player to go north and and they just grab territory and it's just quiet and spooky. Neither one of them wanting to get into an unfavorable engagement, just hopping from cover to cover. Paul mostly sending his troops north, and he's doing a lot of ghosting this game, trying to deny cover to Jeslin as quickly as he can. And there's f there's 500 people watching, so the pressure's on here. They have to make this game count, and Paul is going with a almost dangerously early battle group headquarters there. If you build that book like, wow, there's three conscripts right at your front door, there's a very good chance of a decisive engagement happening. Jeslin will spot it under construction, and he's laying fire on it now. He's got post grenadiers moving up to try to screen this. He may have no choice. I don't know what's going to happen. It's taking a lot of damage. It's already halfway destroyed. He has to push those conscripts away with his infantry now. I think he I think he'll complete it, right? Yes, he will. Jeslin is screened away by the Fox Grenadiers. He can't afford to continue laying fire on that, but that was that was a risky move by Paul. That could have been GG right off the bat. But he does complete it. He should be able to get that repaired. And because the conscripts were focusing fire on that, they were not shooting at the Fox Grenadiers, so it actually kind of turned the engagement in Paul's favor and that he was able to engage conscripts at close range cost effectively. And Sturm Pioneers get inside of the church. Meanwhile, conscripts are taking building control over there in the north, and the map is split roughly in half, but Paul wasn't able to take as much territory in the north as Jeslin in the south because he had to mobilize all of his forces towards the middle to protect while his battle group was under construction. And he's not repairing it yet. There's no immediate need for repairs until there are other threats to it on the field. So he's continuing to use the Sturm Pioneers in combat here, preventing this flamethrower from taking building control, even though it means he has to tank a flamethrower. As long as the flamethrower doesn't get inside the building, he's okay. And as the great Peter Comsiga says, sometimes it's best to just stand there and take Let's it. And this, <laughs> this is a... <laughs> this is a prime example of that. MG-34 is making its way down to the uh, munitions point the down there. And folks grenadiers are going to try to force the conscripts out of that building slowly while retaking control of this cutoff. And conscripts are making their way around towards the south. MG-34 is a little bit vulnerable, using it as a harassment unit this early in the game is risky. It's getting flanked. Two conscripts coming from separate directions, and MG-34 is worst nightmare. Will be forced to retreat. Cannot capture that point. Heavy fortification now available. Pioneers standing by. Enemy 
Western pioneers setting up in the house, forcing those conscripts away. Meanwhile, conscripts in this building are gonna get forced out. They can't hold the line much longer as those folks grenadiers continue to lay fire on them. There they go. And Jeslin will lose control of that house, but he is retaking control of the south, and the map is still very much split in half. And the victory points are d dead even. Paul's probably going to want to think about repairing soon. And things have gotten quiet. Paul taking control of the north. Jeslin sort of recuperating in his base as field infirmary has completed and he's constructed himself tier 2, fielding himself a Maxim. So we can see that they kind of have a slightly different style. They both open with heavy conscripts, as basically everybody does, but from there, Paul goes into mortars. Jeslin going into a Maxim. Curious to see how he's going to use that to his advantage. Mortars would actually be very nice for applying pressure to this already damaged battle group headquarters. The Maxim will be useful for other things. And it's making its way up the right side. He's got one squad of conscripts in cover here in the south. Looks like he's thinking about mm, moving it around. Leaves it in cover for now. He's got mines going down there. <laughs> he's got a revenge demo charge on the church. He lost a squad of his own to that exact demo charge last game. Let's see if he can pull off the same trick against his opponent. And Paul, unlike Jeslin last game, is going to get his tier 4 constructed here. Doesn't look like Jeslin has any way of preventing this from completing. And once it does complete, I suspect that Paul will probably be going for a quick nukes or possibly rushing straight to Panther depending on his fuel situation. And Jeslin um, has chosen Shock Rifle and will probably be getting himself a squad ooh, of Shock Troops next. Looks like his Maxim didn't perform very well on the right side, eating up a grenade and being forced to retreat. Awesome. Fortunately, no shots fired while it's in red cover and it will get away. Very lucky, very lucky Maxim. Wasn't sure that was going to escape and if, uh, if he had handed that over to Paul, it would have been looking looking pretty bad for him. More mines going down. I think we have mines here as well. The demo charge is, is a threat. Paul's definitely wanna, going to want to get himself a minesweeper at some point in this game if he wants to be able to approach the south safely. Otherwise, he's going to be sweeping up mines with folks grenade at his feet. Paul finally gets control of the territory there in the north, taking the strategic and victory points. What gun crew has been lost? What happened? <laughs> oh, that was a demo charge. Demo charge kills an MG34 in the church. Although the church somehow survives, apparently. At least the MG34 is cheaper than folks grenadiers. Conscript harassment getting pushed away there in the north. Stern Pioneers taking control of the center, and that church is not a safe place to be because even small arms fire risks bringing the whole building down at this point. Mortar is bombarding the tier 4 structure. It's taken a little bit of damage, and now it's also firing at units here in the center. Taking control of the victory point now. Jeslin is up to 180 fuel, but only 3 command points, so I suspect we're probably going to see tier 3 from him and bridge the gap with T-34, because he has a lot of resources at his disposal. Meanwhile, Paul is getting himself some Obersold out now. Those conscripts doing? They stuck around way too long in that engagement. 
somehow manage to escape. The demo charge crater will provide green cover to those folks for years if they want to use it, but he's actually just gonna charge straight into close range, which he can do because he's vet too and he has the numbers advantage, so that's not really an issue. And as long as he doesn't hold still, he won't get nailed by that mortar. All the conscripts are going to get forced away because they didn't engage I, and optimally, I guess. A couple flame crits, though, on those folks grenadiers is going to bring the squads low. They're going to continue to apply pressure to Jeslin's mortar here, and we will notice that uh, Paul's map control is looking a little thin. One harassing squad of conscripts making its way around the north has inflicted quite a bit of damage, and both of the folks grenadier squads here will be forced to retreat by that flamethrower. Oversoldaten continue the chase of that mortar, however, bringing it down to four men, and it will retreat, and as soon as that retreat happens, he will initiate a retreat of his own, not wanting to take any manpower bleed on those very expensive Oversoldaten. Conscripts, however, have moved to harass this fuel point, and Paul needs to send something to prevent that now. Conscripts do get suppressed by one flak burst but they get unsuppressed before the Stern Pioneers can arrive to push them away. He's going to try, though. Closing the gap over open ground. I'm not sure who's going to win this engagement. The Conscripts are already a little bit damaged. It's going to be close. I think the Stern Pioneers are pulling ahead. Yes, they have, and easily won. And Oversold Dutton might wipe that flamethrower. There he goes. Boom. Grenade going out on that squad. Nice dodge. They take no damage. Paul is engaging in red cover and will probably be forced away. Ooh, nice mortar hit. Brings that oversold out in squad low as well, and he has to make a full retreat. Meanwhile, the Stern Pioneers continue to work on the fuel point up here in the north, and we have some harassment by an MG-34 here in the south, pointing it straight at a counter-harassment avenue should a squad reveal itself. Doesn't look like any... Oh, yes, we do have a conscript squad on the way. I'm not sure if Jeslin knows what's capturing this. If he throws a Molotov over the hedge, he could win. Looks like he does and is... Mm, it's a little off target, though. He doesn't see exactly where the squad is, and I'm pretty sure he'll lose this. Maybe. No, they didn't get suppressed. Oh, yes, they did. Okay, I'm pretty sure the MG-34 will win that. Meanwhile, incendiary artillery dropped on Paul's battle group headquarters. Doesn't look like it caught anything, however. And a big force of infantry is making its way straight down the middle. Fortunately for him, no demo charges or mines on the approach, and he should be able to start harassing Jeslin's cutoff with a pretty scary-looking blob right there. Meanwhile, here in the north, a Maxim is forcing Sturm Pioneers to retreat, so he will continue to struggle a little bit with his map control in the north, but Jeslin's cutoff is equally struggling. MG-34 nicely placed to counter this flamethrower, but they uh, didn't get suppressed thanks to the green cover there on their approach. Three-man squad of folks grenadiers on the flank may be able to do a little damage to them, and they will retreat. Meanwhile, Oversold Dutton and folks grenadiers putting a lot of pressure on this field gun, making it retreat as well, and Jeslin's mortar continues to get pretty nice hits off. It only has three kills, but it's done a lot of damage, and it's been crucial in winning engagements. Incendiary artillery just got baited there by Paul. You can tell that Jeslin's feeling a lot of pressure to get Paul off of his cutoff if he's dropping incendiary artillery like that. Easily dodged, no casualties inflicted, not used e offensively on the in the middle of a coordinated push, which is kind of as a knee-jerk defensive reaction just to get that blob away from his base. Makes me feel like Jeslin might be feeling a little bit rattled this game. He's certainly not been as successful this game as he was in his first Soviets vs. OKW, where he had Paul totally boxed in. I don't know, we've got a real game on our hands. Definitely too early to call as Jeslin is about to hit 8 command points. He has 320 fuel in the bank, did not go tier 3 by the way. I thought he was going to, but not bridging the gap. He's going to be relying exclusively on Collins. Might be giving Paul a taste of his own double KV-8 medicine or just going straight for the IS-2s. I don't know, we're gonna see. But Jeslin's breaking out of his base now, thanks to the incendiary artillery. He will be able to get a little bit of pressure alleviated, taking control of his own fuel and munitions back. Not to mention he, he did do some good harassment here in the north taking that victory point and strategic point away from Paul. Paul's units are making their way straight back down the middle, but this time a machine gun is ready to counter. Unfortunately, <laughs> that doesn't seem to be enough. Not much AoE suppression on the Maxim, as we know. Doesn't really do a very good job of stopping blobs. And he'll be forced to make a full retreat. 
But it looks like Jeslin managed to steal the one uh, machine gun that was over here, which is a big win for him. So Paul loses one of his <laughs> MG 34s. Actually, his only MG34, but he has a Pac-43 going up, and that's well in advance of Jeslin's call-in tanks arriving. So he is going to have a lot of protection this game. S minefield going down on Jeslin's cutoff as well. I think one of the reasons shock rifle is popular is because the incendiary artillery gives you a tool with which to tackle this thing. Not to mention shock troops. So, even though this is a problem, it's not a problem that Jeslin can't solve, and this is a game we've seen before. This is Jeslin vs. Cruz in Fox Rex and Falta. And Jeslin pulled through that. It was the exact same commanders, exact same everything. Everything was exactly the same, although... Jeslin, I feel like Jeslin's a little behind. He's kind of a little bit on the back foot here, so... This cutoff harassment in particular is... is problematic. Stern Pioneers forced away by a flamethrower here in the south. Meanwhile, here in the center, Jeslin is just getting killed by these S mines. Just and he's, he needs a minesweeper, and he has one. It's on its way now, but he's just taking a lot of losses to, <laughs> to that S mine field. And Paul definitely getting his uh, return on his investment there. Jeslin is under so much pressure, he needs to get his cutoff back. He really needs to get his cutoff back, or harass the north or something. Paul finishes reinforcing here on his battle group headquarters and is making a push straight back for the cutoff, which is getting recaptured now. Maxim moving up, stolen MG34, probably going to make its way back to the front line soon, too. Once this arrives, he should have a little bit more protection from this. Oh no! Oh no! Another flamethrower goes down, and this time he drops it! That's the second flamethrower Jezlin has lost. He probably wishes that that had popped rather than. Rather than handing it over to Folk's Grenadiers, the last thing he needs to be doing. Although it has not been recovered. For some reason. I don't know why he wouldn't recover that. Maybe he's saving it for his Sturms. Which would kind of make sense, I guess. Because even though Folk's Grenadiers are so much d more durable than Sturm Pioneers... Oh no, he didn't. He retreated immediately. Okay, I don't know why I didn't recover that flamethrower. And there it is, there's the KV-8. That's a pretty good anti-blob tool. Three Folk's Grenadiers annihilated already, plus three squads of conscripts chasing. Could go down. Oh, he's trying around the corner. I don't know what's gonna happen. Turret rotation needs to bring it around. Continues firing, but he's firing on the Oversoul Dot, and there it is, Pack 43 could possibly screen this thing away. It needs to disengage. Raken Warfare shot connects. Pack 43 shot connects. It needs to get out of range. And he has, and he should be able to go get some repairs done, and he should also be able to recover this flamethrower, which Paul had ample opportunity to recover. I almost think he didn't even realize that that was sitting on the ground. Conscript's moving to take the north as well. Stern Pioneers need to repair this uh, structure as quickly as they can, though. It's taking quite a bit of pressure from that mortar over the, over the course of the game. It's now down to around half. KV-8 wasn't able to wipe any squads on that chase. In fact, it only has two kills, surprisingly. It came close. Couldn't quite seal the deal, and the Pack 43 easily pushed him away. One man conscript squad is retreating. A sector has been cut off. And Paul continues to apply so much pressure to Jeslin's cutoff. We have the point. Conscripts take control of the strategic point and make their way towards this fuel. 
trying to capture that unseen by the flak half track or flak headquarters and uh panther is now in production so once that panther arrives they'll have a little bit more of a tool with which to hunt down this kv8 as for jeslin he's got 280 fuel 480 manpower so once that manpower ticks up a little higher about 30 seconds he will have access to his is2 the IS-2 is definitely going to have an advantage over that Panther, but of course the Panther has the safe haven of the Pack 43 and all these Panzer trucks supporting it, so it's going to come down to who can use the tools at their disposal more effectively. Maxim gets overwhelmed by infantry. And the map hasn't really changed much over the course of the last 10 minutes. The battle lines are quite clearly drawn here. The north seems to be contested more than anything. Paul needs to stop the victory point harassment up there as much as possible, but it's not its not anything that is game-changing. It's still 400 to 350, roughly. Not even. And their strategies are still kind of evolving. It's looking pretty scary here that Paul has all this veteran infantry running around the field. Seems unstoppable by machine guns. <laughs> and now that it's backed by a panther, that kv is in significant danger, but Jeslin's IS-2 is here, so... Not sure how things are gonna go. Ooh, a stolen Maxim is about to go down. Well, I don't think Paul was watching that engagement. He hands that stolen Maxim right back to his opponent. And it looks like he was forced to make a full retreat from uh, this MG-34, probably. There's a few Soviet mines laying around as well. Shoe mines, too. So both of them are preparing for a big push by their opponent's armor, waiting for their opponent to sort of make a mistake. Jeslin hasn't recruited that Maxim. Looks like he doesn't really want that Maxim. He doesn't feel that it's useful anymore, in all likelihood. Now that there's Oversoldat and then Vet 3 plus infantry running around. So it doesn't even bother, although it does mean that um, if Paul doesn't want to recruit it either, he could just salvage it, which is free fuel for him. And those conscripts have also recovered the drop flamethrower from here in the south. IS-2 engaging squads in the south will push them away and secure that victory point for Jeslin. Points will continue ticking slowly against Paul, but he still has a lot of time to make something happen. Molotov goes off on uh, Paul's clumped infantry here, and the squad has a flamethrower, and an IS-2 is moving up to fire on them. They take a decent amount of casualties and bleed and are forced to retreat. Stern Pioneers are in a lot of damage and need to retreat as well. You can't risk a full Stern Pio squad because they're too costly, they're too expensive to lose. KV-8 moving up with the IS-2 and the Panther is going to pull back a little. He wants to try to engage and vet up his Panther. He needs to make sure to stay in range of his Pack 43, however. Now that Jeslin knows it's on the field, he's not going to get too aggressive and try and chase. But he is going to try and clean up targets on the north and south victory points, given the opportunity. Squads reinforcing here are going to uh, make their way back to the engagement. Panzer Shrex moving to engage Jeslin's tanks. He needs to be careful of the KV-8, though. He doesn't have to be too, too careful of the IS-2. Sometimes it'll one-shot a squad, but it's unusual. But that KV-8 getting a bunch of flame crits is bad. Mortar looks like it's bombarding the uh, Pack 43 or possibly this. It's bombarding this. It's not a heavy mortar, it only does so much. Whoa, that is way too clumped, Paul. Spread out a little. That's a little better. Panther and Panzer Shrek's putting a lot of pressure on the IS-2. It needs to pull back for repairs. And Paul is actually making his way back towards the center, but he really needs to send a squad to go take the North Victory Point at some point. He's also got an MG-34 down here. Incendiary Artillery just got dropped on the Pack 43 but I think it was off target. So it should be fine. 
stolen MG34 risks getting overwhelmed here. Getting guns down and will be forced to retreat. Panther moving up to support. I think that field gun could get cleared out by these overs too. Really needs support from Jeslin's tanks. Conscripts making a push for the north victory point will force that stolen Maxim to retreat. And the Panther just caught the uh, KVA way out of position here. This could be bad for Jeslin. I'm not sure if it's going to get away. There's not really anything moving to support. The field gun has been decrewed. It's all falling apart here. KVA destroyed. Jeslin now operating only on this IS-2. He doesn't really have that effective of an infantry army compared to Paul by any means. He is rapidly falling behind. That IS-2 absolutely needs to make something happen. Incendiary artillery dropping on the Obersoldaten. They'll be forced to retreat. The IS-2 moving up. Ooh, moving up on, on those folks. Got a good shot off. They have to retreat through the flames. This could be big. Oh, so close. Come on, conscripts. There it is. Almost. Oh, and they just barely get away. Barely get away. But they do drop a Panzer Shrek and give uh, Jeslin a much needed break. Not to mention, Jeslin still has quite good map control, still good victory point control, harassing Paul's fuel once again. But that Panzer Shrek is a very nice tool to have at his disposal. He also recruits his field gun there. Stolen Maxim moves up to try and push those conscripts off his fuel point and get that bandic under control. Jeslin's at 200 fuel, Paul's at 125. I'm always curious what an OKW's next fuel purchase is after this Panther. This is where it really gets like, what, what do I do? I've seen Second Panther, we've seen King Tiger, I've seen Luke's, I've seen Mechanized Regiment Headquarters, it could be anything. You have a lot of options once the Panther's on the field, so I'm curious how Paul is going to assess the situation he's in right now and react to the fact that there's an IS-2 on the field and a second one is probably coming. Contact! Enemy fire! Jeslin seems to really like the Stuka, but Paul not so much. I'm not sure I've even seen him build one. So, that would surprise me. Still an MG34 suppressing some stuff over there. Panther moving up on the flank of the IS-2, but the field gun in there is well positioned to counter. Panther shots all bouncing. Field gun shots also bouncing. IS-2 shots are not bouncing. <laughs> Panther has yet to even deal damage. Oberstaldaten, however, will push away everything from the cutoff, and Jeslin is losing his map control rapidly. He loses his cutoff, loses the north. Panther, however, in significant danger, just got crew shocked. I don't know if there are any field guns nearby to capitalize on this. This one's still way over here. And that IS-2 has to disengage. The Pack 43 is too significant a threat, unfortunately. But that Panther was dangerously close to being taken out right there. Meanwhile, here in the north, conscripts are pinned by an MG-34. So they're going to be forced to retreat at some point for taking only very minor damage. Wow, apparently a lot of Oversoldaten died right here because he's only got one-man squads here on his battle group headquarters. That's going to be costly for him to reinforce big time. Jeslin, for his part, has 400 manpower, so he's still a little ways away from his next IS-2, but it's definitely coming. Panther has been fully repaired and scouting around south. Bringing stern pioneers with him. Stolen Panzer Shrek squad, you rowing to safety and then retreating for healing and reinforcement. Very, very hesitant engagements happening here. Nothing decisive by any means. The IS-2 has also been fully repaired. Field gun will be sufficient to convince that Panther to retreat. And it's about halfway to Vet 2. Contact! 
Molotov goes off. On the MG-34, it will retreat. MG, or Maxim in the shed. Going to definitely be forced away by Molotovs as well. Conscript's definitely proving their late game utility here. I think Paul is intentionally just letting that Maxim die to free up a little bit of pop cap and continue to delay those conscripts. While his Panther moves up to assist, it actually will force a retreat from that squad before being annihilated, so it does preserve that victory point for just a little longer, and the Obersoldaten in these conscripts retreat path is uh, is a problem. They're gonna have to be retreating through red cover. Oh man, that was a late retreat. So many conscripts dying. And there they go. IS-2 in the south forces a retreat from a defending MG-34. Meanwhile, Minesweeper moves up from Jeslin. He spots all the shoe mines here in the center, but he doesn't have a way to sweep them up right now, at least not safely. And the Obersoldat in here clear a mortar out as well. Jeez, they are just wreaking havoc. Finally, the IS-2 arrives to push them away. And a second IS-2 as well. Unfortunately, it misses its shot. But these Obers are taking a lot of damage on their retreat, and it's just more bleed. It's 50 per every one of those guys. Four of them died. Five of them died. Costs more, I think, to reinforce those Obers now than, than like a fresh Folks Grenadier squad, so it's significant, but wiping them is really what he wants. The fact that they have veterancy that gets preserved every time they come back to the battlefield, they're more powerful. And it's tough, but Jeslin continues to, to have very strong victory point control. Things are getting low, 287 to 291, neither of them has a lead, but Jeslin's about to take control of the north here. One Panther certainly can't do much to scare away two IS-2s. And a Panzer Shrek supporting is a nice, uh, nice bonus as well. They're moving up to take control of the victory point now. With lots of combat engineer support for repairs, quick repairs on the IS-2, this is going to be a tough push to shut down. Meanwhile, in the south, a field gun is repositioning, and a stolen VET-2 MG-34 is defending the south VP, and it doesn't look like too much is on its way to go take that back, although these overs could probably overwhelm this position quite easily. And a second Panther has been produced by Paul, so he's not going to hold out for King Tiger, he's not going to do anything wacky like Sturm Tiger. Just going straight for Panther, and Panthers have a lot of trouble out producing IS-2s, so I feel like this is a risky move. King Tiger would be risky at first, but sort of have a better late game payoff. This, this is a very, you have to use these tanks very smart, very carefully. Basically, whoever loses their first tank is going to be in a lot of trouble. Paul should be careful not to clump his infantry too hard, it's just going to take one IS-2 shot to Wreck, wreck a clumped up formation. Almost got in range with the pack 43 there, but not quite. Jeslin has a very good sense for how far he can, how far he can push. More mines going down up here in the north. I see an AT grenade here does not penetrate. Panzer Shrek also does not penetrate and he has to retreat the squad because he does not want to lose that squad. That is a valuable squad. Flamethrower and Panzer Shrek in there. There are mines in the road. Maybe he's gonna lose it though. There it goes. Nice pickup by Paul getting that Panzer Shrek off his back. Huge blob of infantry moving up. I think these IS-2s are a little bit outmatched here with these Panzer Shrek supporting both of these Panthers and they're gonna have to pull back but the, those infantry are gonna get bled hard if they advance. So they don't, they are pulling back. IS-2s have taken very minor damage. And they're going to, ooh, ooh wow! That was, that was bad for Paul. And they dropped the Panzer Shrek, he needs to recover that. What is he doing? Oh my goodness. That is extremely bad. He just lost his, both of his vetted Folks Grenadier squads, dropping a Panzer Shrek on the ground. He has nothing nearby to recover. He just walked right out in front of those IS-2s and just got shredded to pieces. 
Apollo gets the sense that he has to trade here, and he's gonna try to go in, but there is a field gun defending here. Doesn't really look like the engagement is going in his favor as shots are bouncing, and he's going to be forced to disengage. Wanted to make something happen on the damage dice too, but just didn't have the means. He really has no choice but to try to pull back here. I don't even know if this Panther will get away. Comet Engineers recover the Panzer Shrek and get a nice shot off. He's trying to blitz to safety. IS-2 shot bounces off the frontal armor of the Panther and it looks like it will escape. Both will escape. What? What just happened? A squad of Oversoldan just died somewhere. I don't know what happened, but it's falling all apart. I missed it. I missed it, but a full squad of Oversoldan just died. Paul has so little left. These two Panthers are his only saving grace and his Sturm Pioneers are dead. It's all falling apart. This could be it. This could be it. MG-34 attempts harassment in the south, gets shut down by the stolen MG-34. Stern Pioneers making their way onto the battlefield for some much needed repairs on those Panthers, which is taking ages. In the meantime, repairs are being performed on these IS-2s, and Jeslin's lead is slowly growing. <laughs> I mean, victory points are still honestly quite even, despite the way despite the way things have been going here. And Paul really needs to field himself some more stuff, but he just has such limited manpower. I mean, honestly, even though he lost so much, it seemed like he lost so much, he's at 74 out of 100 pop cap, which just goes to show, I mean, those Panthers and Pac-43 really do represent the bulk of his investment. Once these are fully repaired, he'll be in a better position. He's getting himself a mechanized regiment at headquarters now, and now begins the long road to King Tiger. It's gonna be quite a while before he gets there. Conscripts are oorawing behind enemy lines. I think Jeslin wants to drop incendiary artillery on this Pack 43, and he's going to be poised to make a big push with his IS-2s once that gets cleared. Not to mention he gets all veterancy off of that thing. Paul doesn't have any Folks Grenadiers, so he has no cheap squads with which to recruit that, only Sturms, and they're very expensive to reinforce. Molotov goes off on the MG-34, forcing its reposition into more fire. Wow, that's close. And the squad dies. IS-2 moving up, actually detonates the one mine in his approach with that one shot right there. The Panthers, however, have been fully repaired and are ready to push away this advance. The Sturm Pioneers will recrew the Pack 43 the, the push there was not timed quite right by Jeslin's tanks. Conscripts will get pushed away from the north fuel. Oversoldan making their way up there now. Meanwhile, <laughs> this is a fresh mortar, I think. I there it got recruited, but he has just been bombarding this thing the entire game with that mortar. He is not going to uh, not going to stop. Sturm Pioneers making their way over there to administer some repairs on that thing, and the Panthers are going to make a play for the IS-2 over here on the right side. But the second IS-2 is moving to support. There is a field gun in the general area as well, if the engagement goes that way. Oh no! Flanking squad of conscripts does damage the engine of this Panther, and we could see Jeslin attempting to follow up now. IS-2s want to engage, mm, but he changes his mind. Decides that that's not, uh, not an engagement that he thinks is going to happen. Not to mention he has to screen away the overs here. They throw a smoke grenade and then immediately retreat. Generally taking up the IS-2's time, but not much of anything else, and the Panthers will simply continue to defend the fuel while an MG-34 makes its way up to the most strategic point to try and get that under control. Contact. Fire. 
IS-2 is firing on the Schwer Panzer headquarters. He's attacking ground at maximum range, which means he's hoping for overshoot to just hit it or do AOE damage to that thing. It's not really hitting, though. Needs to get closer if he can. Catches those overs in this corridor, though. Prioritizes the Sturm Pioneers, which is a smart decision. They go down very easy. And Paul's going to have to repurchase them again. And there they are. Shutting down his, abil his opponent's ability to repair is very valuable. Just continuing to drain Paul's manpower left and right while his own climbs. He's up to 400 now and 350 fuel in the bank. If he loses an IS-2, he can field a new one. But other than that, he's completely pop-capped. And his resource economic advantage will start to grow. And over time, he will be able to utilize that to starve his opponent to death in a war of attrition, which is what this very much has turned into. IS-2 needs some repairs over here. They're both being very hesitant to engage. The Panthers have the disadvantage, which is why they can't engage. The Pack 43 is defending this position, which is why the IS-2s can't push. And this is what happens in these long fortifications battles, is that the Soviet player has to find a way to coordinate an assault that's going to be favorable for them without taking a million losses as they out of themselves against the OKW defenses. Molotov goes off on the MG-34 here. Incendiary artillery coming down on the Pack 43 We could see a coordinated push by the IS-2s during this. He had, to, he had to sacrifice a conscript squad just to be able to do this. And he does decrew that thing. The IS-2s should definitely take advantage of this moment to engage while that Pack 43 is decrewed and in flames. Those Panthers get a nice series of opening shots, though. Engagement's just not going in the IS-2's favor as they miss and bounce, and both of the Panthers are Vet-2, which is making them difficult to slug it out against. I don't know, I think their nerves are getting a little frayed. They're both, they just, they don't want to lose. They don't want to lose. There's 600 people watching this game. They want it, they want it so bad, I can tell. But it makes them a little frazzled. What do I do? What do I do in this situation? I really think Paul losing all of his Folks Grenadiers here, he gave two Panzerschrecks to his opponent. I think that was such a, such a turning point. Such a turning point in this game, he just couldn't afford for that to happen. Also, the Mortar continues to apply pressure here. Sturm Pioneers trying to administer repairs. He's got so many things he needs to repair and so much damage coming in, it's tough to manage. Sending squads down here to the south, sending his overs and his MG-34 as well. IS-2 clears out an MG-34 in the middle. Looks like that's going to get stolen. We will have an attempt for the center victory point. Panthers moving up to prevent, however. Top mount machine guns stand a good chance of clearing out that conscript squad. And the Panthers need to pull back get some repairs, but he's already tired of preparing this thing. Those two mortars are just such a pain. <laughs> such a pain. He can barely even get the repairs to go up. The bar is practically standing still. Oh no, don't hit that mine. Oh, Jesslyn wants him to hit that mine so bad, but he's going to disengage. Forced to reverse. IS-2 moving up to fire on this MG-42 squad. Enemy movement. On the flank. 
And there it goes. Conscript's moving down to harass the victory points further. Actually, he still holds them. In fact, he's had his opponent double capped for so long, I didn't even realize that he garnered himself a 100 victory point lead. Starting to get pretty tough. Oh, no! What happened here? Both of his Panthers took engine damage from one mine. Oh, no. He has a destroyed engine on the front one, a damaged engine in the back. This is an absolute disaster. I've never seen one mine inflict such catastrophic damage, and the field gun will take him out. Vet 2 IS-2 going to be slugging it out with a destroyed engine panther. It stands no chance of surviving this engagement. The second one is moving up to support the field gun. We'll continue to fire on it. That's a dead panther, and if I'm not mistaken, that's probably the game. Wow. And there it is. GG, Jeslin wins yet again. Congratulations to Jeslin. He is our winner. Thank you, Gaddafi, for your generous donation. Okay, well, that is it. That sums it right up, everybody. That's That concludes the tournament. I really hope everybody enjoyed watching. 600 viewers. That's the most I've ever had, so I'm highly appreciative and on a Monday too I honestly thought my 500 yesterday was gonna be the max but wow a lot of people showed up to see this tournament and what a, what a beautiful end what a proper finish to a company of heroes tournaments not only do mines win games mines win tournaments they win tournaments and the proof is right there I think that's gonna go down in company of heroes 2 history well that's it. That's all of my final comments. I hope you enjoyed, everybody. That's it. Bye, everyone.